as the chemicals they take us higher. The night's young and it's just begun. As she puts her hand in mine, we wanna chase the night. Descriptive like an adjective. I got a vendetta against people who patented being negative when you should be getting after it. I got facts over facts over tracks. This and that, spitting slow, spitting fast. I could roast, I could gas. Think I'm okay at last, but I don't know if that can erase all the past and the pettiness. A reflection of the emptiness. Hilarious. You think you're with my time? You're delirious, mysterious because you are behind the fake exterior. Inferior. You know I'll always be a bit superior. Get off of me. This ain't no humble brag. I want you to hear words. You can say them back. I want you to feel free from the chains at last and to believe in what you got. It was built to last. Yeah. Now that I've been put through, I never got anyone's help. I had to do it all myself. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fake news. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement.
Hello and welcome to Crime and Justice. Hi there to everyone on X. Thank you for being here. Right, that document I was reading last night, I had something like 14 pages left to read. Well, what I'm doing, I've posted that on X. So you're the lucky ones, you can get to read it. Click on the link, it'll take to scribe and it'll take to the document. And it's, it's not, um, got no, uh, what, well, I can't think of the word now. But it's, it's the whole document, right? No redactions. The only redactions are what the courts or whatever have put on it. But otherwise, there's no redactions. I will say, before we start, if anyone finds this triggering at all, Please, walk away, walk away, your health comes before anything else, and the death of my two cats are going to happen very soon, if they don't stop the flipping fighting, I'm not joking, I've I sit, they're sitting there and they're fighting, and then they, I stop them and they sit there and they look at me and they're going, you're fighting, you're fighting, you're fighting, you're flipping fighting. <laughs> and they just look at me as they say, What the feck is she on about? They obviously haven't watched. God, I can't think of the name of the film. Right, but it's based in Birmingham. Based from in Birmingham from the nineteen hundreds <laughs> when my grand was very little. <laughs> He's now no longer with us. Anyway, um, so yeah, please. If any of this is triggering, please walk away. You can always come back to it if you want to and watch it later. Right. Walk away, take five minutes, ten minutes, half an hour, two hours, whatever, two days. But if you find it triggering, walk away. Um, come off my live last night to find out that all in all, I'm done. I've got it written down, got it written down. But I actually got my book last night and wrote it down. There's actually 3,285 complaints filed, right, with this law for with this one law firm, right, right? They've filed only, they've opened only 120. Obviously, a lot of them may not be, may just be trying their 15 minutes of fame. A lot of them might be gone past the date, like they have a, a time limit, like 10 years or something. It may have gone past that 10 year date. But in those 120, in those 120, 60 men, 60 women, 25 of them, possibly, from what I understand, 25 of them were minors, children. Fecking children. This is one sick piece of... I thought the other case I was working on, looking at, and still got working on, was sick. Right? But this is a, a bloke who was there, who had this celebrity public image... I swear to God. Celebrity public image who children swooned on. Oh, look, it's PJJ. Oh, oh. PJ just released his latest song. Oh, gotta go and buy it. Gotta go and buy it. Yeah. Now we know where the puff daddy came from. All right. I don't know if you can hear my cats in the background. They are fighting. Anyway, so, yeah, 20, 
five of them were miners. That's just sick. And we don't know how many more that are out there. As I said, there was 3,285, but a lot of them might have gone past 10 years. Like, this was from, when was it from? Uh, from 2015. So they had to get in this year. Right, they had to put the claims in this year because next year would have been 10 years. Well, they might have had up to next year to get a claim in, right? But anything under 2015, like 2014, 2013, no, it's, it's gone past that 10 year period, which is a shame. Which is a shame because if these out of those 220. Those 3,285 complaints, if they were legitimate complaints, right? If those 3,100 and whatever were a free, actual complaints, that is such a shame because they won't see their day in court. Which means they won't get the help and support they need. And they need the help and support. One was, at the time, one was nine years old. Nine years old. So... It just made me oh so mad last night. I to the point where after I listened to that uh, newsreel, that press thing, I turned my TV off and had to go to bed. Had to walk away from me. I just shut everything down and just go to bed and just shut my eyes and I did I did put my TV on, but I. Uh, I wasn't taking any notice of it, it was, you know, I just had to try and blank everything out what I'd heard. So, anyway, I'm sorry to say, but if you haven't seen this already, we are going to see it now. But I was just so mad. Uh, let's just get this up on the screen for you. I don't know how anyone else feels about this. And you know what got me mad as well? When I was listening to, you know when they did the raid on his homes, right? On his homes. Back in March, was he? The mother of two of the sons turned around and said, would they have gone in and treated... She's bringing in the race card. She's bringing in that race card. Would they have done that to a white man's, white man's sons? Well, yeah, the Homeland Security and FBI are going to go up and go, knock, 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 can we come and talk to you, please? No! They were going mob-handed, heavy-handed, whatever way they want. Because they are not going to want, oh, can we come in, please? Because we need to talk to you about some racketeering cases and S-trafficking that your father's being involved. I mean, need to, we've got a warranty to search. That's giving them feckers time to get rid of any evidence. No, they're going mob-handed. Boom. Going. Yes, arrest them. Because there's guns on the premises, you do not know if they've got guns on them, whatever on them. So, yeah, go in mob handed. They're old enough, they're big grown men now, they're not little boys. 
the grown men. And one of them has already got been charged with assault. Uh, a woman who worked on one of the boats that Diddy had hired. Right? She got assaulted by one of his sons. So, yeah, the really guy go, can we come in, please? Get the feck. You should have brought your kids up better than Matt Love. Anyway, oh, God, what am I doing? Anyway, so let me get me off here. I'll just go down to the bottom. There. Make this bigger. Hello, everyone. Right, and away we go. My name is Tony Busby. I'm a lawyer here in Houston. I'm licensed in Texas and in New York. And I'll introduce other members of the Hello. As many of you know, our law firm has been at the forefront of some of the most important litigation in the United States. We like the tough cases. We thrive in the complicated cases. We've handled over the last 25 years some very big and very important cases. I believe that this one may surpass them all. There are many facets to this. The conduct we will describe today occurred over more than 20 years. There are many people and many entities involved. And we're gonna follow this evidence wherever it takes us. We will find the silent accomplices. We will expose the enablers who enable this conduct behind closed doors. We will pursue this matter, no matter who the evidence implicates. These brave victims who have stepped forward deserve nothing less. The biggest secret in the entertainment industry that really wasn't a secret at all has finally been revealed to the world. The wall of silence has now been broken and victims are coming forward. Our team has had at this point more than 3,285 individuals contact us with people claiming people claiming to have been victimized by Sean Combs. After vetting, we now represent 120 individuals who intend to bring civil claims in civil court against Sean Diddy Combs, as well as claims against many other individuals and entities that we will name as defendants as we file these individual cases. And you should know, to the extent the clients feel comfortable, we also intend to make these individuals available to the authorities, specifically to the FBI. And you should also know a few of them have already been spoken to by the FBI. Now, before we discuss the nature of the claims and claimants themselves, let me comment on the large volume of calls we have received since our first announcement. Even before the indictment of Sean Combs, we had received a small volume of calls and it screened a handful of cases. After the indictment of Sean Combs and the announcement that we were pursuing these claims, the floodgates opened. People who otherwise for a variety of reasons are now stepping forward to make their voices heard and to pursue justice. But no, they're stepping forward now because they know Diggy is behind bars. So, and no one in that firm, no one outside of that prison, in his, under his charge, in his businesses or whatever, is going to do anything without his say so. No one. And so because he can't get to anyone and tell them what to do, these people are now feeling safe to come forward. Right? Because he had, like, this is what I was saying last night, they can't give him bail. They can't. They can't give him bond. They can't. Because even if he's under house arrest, 
He's got telephones. He's got family that can come and visit, who can take messages out to for him, right? Who can go and visit his little psychics, yeah? And get messages out for him. They, he cannot be allowed. Most of these people are scared. They fear backlash in their communities. They fear backlash in their own families. Hmm. They are afraid of retaliation from the perpetrators and their associates. Yep. They are rightly afraid for their own personal safety. Hmm. I expect that through this process, many powerful people will be exposed. Many dirty secrets will be revealed. We know what we are potentially up against. And as is always the case in situations like this, when a celebrity is involved, people can be downright mean and nasty. Oh, yeah. You would be shocked at the length fans will go, no matter the evidence, to the contrary, to defend celebrities they love. I mean, there's a reason for this word fans, the fanatics. <laughs> I've personally already been threatened multiple times on social media. When I agreed to pursue this, I expected as much. This isn't my first real video. But victims who step forward to have their voices heard should not be subjected to that kind of conduct. They should not be targeted. I want to say this, and I want to be clear about it. Although we are vetting each call as stringently as we can, I would anyone, be it a fan of Diddy, who is this threat to people like this guy and other people, like these, these people that are coming forward, in my eyes, I was bagged as Diddy, right? Because if you had any morals at all, you would not be sticking up for a guy like this, right? Now, there's a case we've been following on here, right? And people were having a go at the parents, right? Now, I can understand where some of them are coming from. But I live outside, I can understand where the parents are coming from. Now, if Diddy was my son, I wouldn't actually disown him. I wouldn't, I wouldn't condone what he's been doing. I really would not condone it. But I wouldn't disown him. Right? And I wouldn't be passing on any messages for anyone. Right? If he's done what he's done, and we don't know yet because he hasn't been charged with anything, like, none of these complaints is not actually been charged with yet. Right? So, if he's, and he's innocent until found guilty, if he's found guilty on all of these charges, then, fine, he deserves to be locked up. He deserves. Now, this is going to be a very high-profile case. The If this goes to court, a jury, which it will, I cannot see. I think if the prosecutors make a deal, I think it should be a betrayal for all these people that have bravely come forward to tell them what happened to them. It would be a betrayal on their behalf. Right? And so I hope they don't make a deal with him. I hope they do take him to court. But the witnesses, or, uh, the jury, I think, need, uh, they need some sort of way so that people can't get photos of them. Like, I know you're not allowed to take your mobile phones in there or anything electronic all in there, right? And I know TV stations, if it's aired on TV, they're not allowed to get any of the jewellery on their footage, right? But somewhere along the line, if they want to find out who the jury members are, there's got to be someone who's going to talk. When it comes to money, 
ได้บุกชูกร้อยสิบนักสังเกตยังThat would typically be not able to be brought. 
that it revives such claims and they can be brought even 25 to 30 years later because there's a recognition there in New York and California and other states that, that it's very difficult for a victim to come forward. And I would, I would respectfully suggest the only reason many of these people are coming forward because they see other victims coming forward. And it gives them some comfort that, hey, I won't be the only one. And I expect more victims will come forward. And there's an old saying that says, a lie has great speed, but truth has endurance. The acts complained of in these cases that we're going to file occurred primarily in New York, either Manhattan or the Hamptons or occurred in California, primarily in Los Angeles, or in Florida, primarily in Miami. Most of these events and incidents occurred at parties, typically after parties, or album release parties, New Year's Eve parties, Fourth of July parties, something they called a puppy party, the all-white party, although several of these events occurred at auditions. Many times, uh, especially young people, people wanting to break into the industry, were, were coerced into this type of conduct uh, in the promise of being made a star or in the promise of, of having um, Sean Combs listen to their tape or even let them read for Sean Combs. You should know that some of this behavior occurred at well-known venues in New York City. Some of this behavior occurred at private residences of people that we all know. Some of this behavior occurred at hotels that we're all familiar with. You should know that more than 55% of the victims filed reports, reported this conduct to either the authorities, that is the police, or to hospitals. We are in the process of collecting with our team assistance, uh, medical records, uh, reports that were made to the authorities. And I've already said that some of the individuals in this group did in fact talk to the FBI. You should know that, that several of the individuals, and when I say several, I mean many, uh, who did in fact seek medical treatment were drug tested and drugs were found in their system. Weird drugs, drugs that you probably never heard of. One, one in particular that, that continues to pop up is a drug called xylazine or trank, which based on uh, our research is known as a horse tranquilizer. Now, there's been a lot of reports that we're filing a class action. This is not a class action. Class action is when one or two people will file a case on behalf of a group of people. That's not this. These cases will be individual cases. Each case will live and die on its own merit. These cases will be filed individually, one plaintiff against whoever the defendants were involved in the case. Each case may be filed in one venue like California. Another case may be filed in New York. One case may sue just Sean Combs, but multiple other people. One case may sue a range of people. I would expect most of those to be filed, as I said, in New York and Los Angeles. Now, I know this. Many of you came here thinking or hoping or perhaps uh, believing that I, I may start naming names. That day will come, but it won't be today. I can't wait for that day when we will name names other than Sean Combs, and there's a lot of names. Um, it's a long list already. And of course, I already know who some of these individuals are, but because of the nature of this case, we're going to make damn sure. Whoever was involved, whoever was involved, and I don't care how high official they are, be them the president or the head of the FBI or the CIA or whoever, the flipping king of the UK, I don't care. If they are involved, I'm not saying they are. Hypothetically, I'm just saying that, right? I don't care how high they are, they are. They should be named and they should be shamed. Because I'm sorry. All, once these ca cases, these 120 cases, are put up, the complaints of giving into the court and whatever, the names will be out there. When it goes to trial, their names 
will be out there. So why should they be the only ones who've gone through this horrendous ordeal with these people? And yet these people who've done these horrendous actions to them are saying, oh, anonymous. No. No. How? No. Name and shame them all. I don't care. They should not, if they don't want their names told on any of these things, they shouldn't be doing what they're doing then, should they? Damn sure that we're right before we do that. Uh, but the names that we're going to name, assuming that our investigators confirm and corroborate what we've been told, are names that will shock you. These are individual cases. There are indeed other perpetrators involved. They will be revealed when that particular individual case is ready to be filed. They already know who they are. And I'm talking here about not just the cowardly, but complicit bystanders. That is those people that we know watched this behavior occur and did nothing. And I'm talking about the people that participated, encouraged it, egged it on. They know who they are. Call them the facilitators of foul play, willing participants in foul conduct. As we identify them, each will be part of this case as defendants. These defendants will not only include individuals, but would also include corporate entities who ultimately profited off of this culture and behavior. I'm looking at banks, pharmaceutical companies, hotels. We know that many of these individuals were paid cash. We know that that many of these individuals involved, whether they were the ones being assaulted and abused or they're witnessing other people being assaulted and abused and then paid and threatened and told to leave, typically paid 10 grand in cash and told to leave and then threatened as they were leaving. So in addition to Sean Combs, you should know the defendants in these cases we're going to file will include anyone, of course, who engaged in the assault or exploitation, anyone who participated in such in any way, anyone who encouraged or facilitated this, this conduct, anyone who was in the room and watched it happen but ne made no effort to stop it, any venue or venue owner who was aware of what was going on. So all those hotels, all those hotels where he used to have his Three off, right? Is going after them as well. Good on them. Good on them. Because they knew what was going on and they did nothing. But failed to stop it. Any individual or entity who knew about the conduct and benefited from it, but did nothing to report it or stop it. And any individual or entity who covered it up or helped cover it up people who know who they are should just come forward now. I would imagine as we speak here, there are a myriad of people who are very nervous. You can't hide skeletons in the closet forever. I would expect there are many people out there right now who are, who are desperately searching their memories as they delete their texts and data. Now, although the... Uh, wow. If they are, they're still as thick as two planks of wood then because the FBI can trace back all that data. So it's pointless them deleting it because it just makes them look more guilty. These are, in fact, individual cases. There is a common theme, an MO, if you will. Typically, the victim is lured into a situation where he or she is given a drink. Typically that drink uh, reported by these victims is apparently laced with something. Once that drink takes effect, the perpetrators perform all kinds of sexual acts on the victims, many times passing him or her around as other people watch and enjoy the show and then leave the victim ashamed, confused, injured, and wondering what happened. When the victim reaches out, he or she is told not to say anything, 
Sometimes there are threats of physical violence or financial repercussions or bodily harm. The claims we intend to bring will include the following, violent sexual assault or rape, sexual abuse, facilitated sex with a controlled substance, false imprisonment, compelling prostitution, sexual misconduct, dissemination of video recordings, false imprisonment, sexual abuse of minors. Given the large volume of cases and given our other docket obligations and given the fact that we want to be sure when we file these cases that they are fully vetted, I expect we'll start filing these cases against Sean Combs and other perpetrators within the next 30 days. Now, it's rare, you know, sexual abuse, sexual exploitation, uh, these types of, this type of activity is pervasive in our society. And it's rare we get a chance where, where uh, we can really focus on this as a country and really focus on this about how pervasive this is and what we could, as collectively can do about it. So I, I thought I'd take this opportunity before I go into some of the individual cases and talk about some of the individual claims being made and some of the, so you'll get a, get a sense of what this 120 people group looks like individually. I wanna bring forward uh, Carrie Paul. She's a national victim advocate uh, who uh, helps victims uh, who have been, um, victimized uh, by this type of conduct. And she has some important words and I hope you'll, you'll pay close attention. I think it's important that you hear from her. Hello, I'm Carrie Paul with the National Victim Advocate. It's not easy for any survivor to come forward. Our culture doesn't believe survivors. It blames and questions them. Instead of showing support, many choose to enable abusers. The media runs stories asking why it took so long for survivors to come forward instead of asking what barriers exist. We also don't equip law enforcement with the ability to handle sexual assault crimes. Lack of funding translates to lack of training. We have officers in the field that don't know what to say to a rape victim. And also an alarming amount of backlog, untested rape kits. Prosecutors are, are focused on what they can prove in a case, and if so, how to do that at time of trial. Advocates and staff are stretched thin with growing caseloads in the criminal justice system. Most people don't know how the criminal justice works in general. There isn't enough staff or resources to adequately explain the entire process to every victim and survivor. Our culture works against victims and survivors every day and abusers know this. Abusers work themselves into positions of power building a public image that is trusted and financially large enough to make people look away. Abusers are unfortunately very skilled at power and control, the foundation of abuse. They seek victims who are vulnerable, such as children, their employees, and their intimate partners, all who see a different version than the public does. All who rely on the abuser in some way. And for those that do come forward and aren't believed face questions like, are you sure it happened that way? Were you drinking? What were you wearing? All of this creates an environment that enables abusers to continue abusing them and future victims. To the survivors that have come forward despite not being believed at some point in time, 
your courage is like nothing we have seen before. We thank you for coming forward for yourself and all survivors. And lastly, I want all survivors that are watching this to know we believe you and we support you. Thank you. Now to hear from my co-counsel, Andrew Van Arsdale. Now, it's right what she says. It's like, are you sure it happened that way? Uh, yeah, I was there. You know what I mean? And what's she drinking? What was she wearing? It doesn't matter what they was wearing or what they was, or if they was drinking. Because otherwise you're saying, well, you shouldn't be drinking and you shouldn't be wearing those sort of dresses and whatever. Okay, I'll just become a nun. Is that what they want all women to be? Nuns. <coughs> Sorry. It does annoy me when I hear about that. And I remember once when I was at work at this one place where I worked in a, in a grocery store, you know, a large store. And this woman walked in and she went up to the counter where they sell the tobacco and all that lot and the lottery tickets. And she walked in with her partner, boyfriend. Okay, what she was wearing was very short. And one of the women who was on the customer service desk where I was, hold on, turned around, stood there and said, that's clickbait, uh, that's uh, uh, jailbait. And I looked at her and I went, pardon? She said, that's jailbait. I said, what do you mean by that? She said, well, with what she's wearing. I said, yeah. But why is it jailbait? <laughs> said, because it, what's could ha what could happen is some guy could make advances to water and then her partner is going to kick off. And I went, and that's her fault because of what? Because of what she's wearing. No, it's not her fault. So you can't sit down there and call them jailbait because of what she was wearing. You can't. That's not her problem if someone makes, uh, likes, likes what he sees and her boyfriend gets jealous. That's not her problem. That is the problem of her boyfriend, who should be able to control himself and say, well, yeah, she's with me. You know what I mean? And leave it at that. So, and I must admit, I see girls today. I saw a girl the other week on the bus. She's going to school, to school. And as she's walked past me on the bus to get up, on the bus to get off, her skirt, I'm thinking, leave some imagination for the guys, please. Because I'm not sh joking, she was showing her butt cheeks, right? And I'm thinking, there's a time and place for you to wear that sort of skirt. At school, it shouldn't be like that, right? But this is the problem with society because I was telling my son and my son came and said, well, when my daughter gets to that age, she won't be wearing skirts that short to school. Short to school. And I thought, well, really, it's, the school's at fault by letting them wear those sk skirts. They should simplify and say, we need the skirts to be a certain length. We're not saying they've got to be below the knee. They can be above the knee, but they've got to be uh, a certain length from the backside down. Right? And so it's up to the school to in implicate these rules for school uniform. If they're not going to implicate them, then these girls are going to carry on wearing these school, uh, short skirts. Which I think is wrong. They should have a... Like, I remember at school, 
right? When I was at school, they didn't have short skirts then, right? They didn't. And so we used to roll them up at the waistband, right? You wouldn't see it under the school sweatshirt or jumper or blazer. You wouldn't see that skirt rolled up. And then we'd have these over the knee socks. <laughs> And every time we went to the assembly, you'd have this one teacher standing there going, Stop, all you girls, unroll your skirts, lower your skirts, and roll your socks down to below the knee and the skirt down to the knee. So we'd stand there doing it all, rolling the skirt down, rolling our socks down. We come out of the assembly and we walk down to the cloakroom and up went the skirts again. Not short, short. It's just like so far above the knee, right? It wasn't showing our backsides or anything. And then up come the socks again, right? And we'd walk around school all day like that. But if you was going into assembly, it'd stop you. I'm thinking, but we're walking around school like all day. <laughs> but I think it's down to the school when the girls are wearing skirts like that. They should say, no. Nope, no, that's not allowed. Come on. You know what I mean? But to call a woman because she's gone out and she's got this really nice outfit on, it is short, but all get, all women wear short dresses, really. I don't know more. I used to. Don't know more. Right? And, um, but to call them jailbait, no, that's not her fault if, if someone likes what they see and her boyfriend starts punching out, that's her boyfriend's fault. He should turn around and say, yeah, she's with me. You can look, but don't touch. So, and as for drinking, it's just saying women shouldn't be going out at all then. We're not allowed to drink. We're not allowed to wear short skirts and low tops and all that lot because of men. Because they can't control themselves. That is just out of order. Uh, you know, we've, we've created a sexual abuse hotline. Uh, and I want him to visit with us just a few moments about how that works and the kind of volume of calls we've received. Thank you, Tony. Um, like Tony said, my name is Andrew Van Arsdale. I'm the managing partner of ABA Law Group. Uh, we have offices in uh, California. Montana and North Carolina. Um, to build off of what you just so well said, it's very hard to come forward. And given what we've experienced the past 10 days is really unprecedented in, in my career, at least. We represent thousands of survivors of abuse and never, ever in a 10 day period. I have got the volume to up as well. I'm oh, sorry, it's gone back to the beginning, hasn't it? Right. I have got the volume up as loud as I possibly can. Right, I have got the volume as loud as I can. Can't get any louder on there or on my laptop. On my laptop. Of survivors of abuse and never ever in a 10-day period have we seen over 3,000 people come forward or we've confirmed and decided to investigate and represent 120 people while we're continuing to work through another 100 plus cases to prove them up to validate what had happened here and to hold those that are responsible accountable and so like tony said we've set this up 1-800-200-7474. I have a team of people standing by literally. If you know that this happened to someone and you have information about it, please contact us. If this happened to you, come forward. There's attorney-client privilege here. What you tell us is in confidence. Yes, we'll have to go out and build your case, but we will protect you. And the other thing that I want to say is the pattern and practice of this 
again, it's unprecedented. Over 30 plus years of the same sort of events happening, people thrust into the circle reportedly and horrible things happening to them as a result. And from talking to these people that have come forward these past 10 days, I can tell you unequivocally that because the federal government did what it needed to do and indicted this man, that they put him in jail and a judge kept him in jail, they tell me directly, this validates my feelings. For so long, I thought it was my fault. What is it about me that put myself in that scenario? What was I wearing at the time? What did I do to be subjected to such horrific treatment at these people that I was trying to trust? Well, we know now it was not your fault. You were victimized by a group of powerful people that operated for 30 plus years, taking advantage of their wealth and the power that they held within the music industry. So again, thank you to every single person that has come forward and contacted our office over the past 10 days. If you or someone you know suffered the same sort of treatment, please contact us at the number behind me and we will help you. Thank you. What gets me as well is this isn't just women, right? Who've been assaulted sexually. It's not, it's, it's men as well. So if a guy goes into the, in, up to the police and goes, I've been sexually assaulted, blah, blah, they, they look, they probably go, yeah, right, okay, okay. Are they going to say, are you sure it happened that way? Possibly to a man, yes. Are they going to say, was you drinking? No, they're not going to say it. That to a man. And they're not going to say, what was you wearing? But men have a harder case of proving it because they look at men and say, but you're a man. You should be able to fight them off. No, you can't. No, they can't. Like, I don't know if anyone watched the um, court case with, oh, God, what was her name? I can't think of the name. But he was the one who's been assaulted, intimidated, abused, and all that law. And he won the case. And I'm glad he came forward. He, he put it all out there. You know, it's hard for a man to stand in a sit in a court and say, This is what happened to me. Because a lot of people don't believe me. And I think it's about time the police started believing the men and the women and not just going, Oh well, did that really happen that way? Just because they haven't got the resources to deal with it. Right? It's ridiculous. It's disgusting. Everyone should. It's like it's going to court now. Trial, yeah. They'll be taking it to trial. And in his case, he's innocent until pleading, proven guilty. But when a woman comes up to the police or a male, a man, they should believe them until proven differently. You know what I mean? If they look into the case and think, okay, well, this isn't what he told us, or this isn't what she told us, and they've got witnesses and video evidence to prove that that isn't what happened, then fair enough. But they should be believed until proven differently. I think it, it speaks to how important this issue is uh, in the United States and frankly internationally that we have uh, re reputable people here that want to provide the kind of information that I think victims need to hear, witnesses need to hear, the public needs to hear. Let me introduce to you now 
uh, Olivia Rivers from the Texas Association Against Sexual Assault and let her visit with you a few moments about uh, these types of cases. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Q Olivia Rivers. I am just served my um, six year as the board chair for the Texas Association Against Sexual Assault. I'm also the CEO for the Bridge Over Troubled Waters, which is a local rape crisis center here in the Houston area. So thank you for being here as we address these heinous crimes. Sexual assault is not just a crime of violence against the body. It's an assault on the very essence of human dignity and safety. It shatters lives, it destroys confidence, and all too often, it leaves survivors feeling like they are voiceless, isolated, and vulnerable. The reality for many survivors is that coming forward to report their assault is one of the most difficult and daunting tasks that they will ever have to do. And for some, it may take days, months, or even years to speak up if they ever do. The reasons for this have been mentioned, but include the fear of being disbelieved, being blamed or judged, and of course, retaliation. The trauma of the assault itself being compounded by the trauma of the criminal justice process where survivors must relive their experience in order to seek justice. And these feelings and fears are further exacerbated when the allegations are against prominent figures in the entertainment industry or Hollywood. Cases involving powerful figures often attract significant media attention, which can deter victims from coming forward due to fear of public exposure or scrutiny. The intense focus on these high profile cases can make survivors feel that their personal lives are being put under a microscope, causing further emotional distress. These allegations mentioned here today as reported reflect deeply troubling claims that deserve thorough investigation and no individual, regardless of their stature, is above the law or public accountability. Sadly, the statistics paint a very disturbing picture. According to the National Sexual Violence Resource Center, one in three women and one in six men will experience some form of sexual violence in their lifetime. In the U.S. alone, there are approximately 463,000 victims of rape or sexual assault every year, and these numbers barely scratch the surface as sexual violence remains one of the most underreported crimes. But the numbers that follow tell an even more troubling story. Only about 23% of sexual assaults are reported to law enforcement. Of those, just 5% lead to an arrest, and even fewer, less than 1% of reported cases ever result in a conviction, which is a devastating gap between the crime and the justice that survives. I want to briefly focus on our state here in Texas. My internet is playing. According to the Texas Association Against Sexual Assault, 6.3 million Texans, men and women, will experience some form of violence. That's every two minutes someone is sexually assaulted, meaning during the course of this press conference, around 60 individuals will forever be changed by this violence. And those are just a few of the victims. Obviously, this is unacceptable. We cannot allow this cycle of silence and inaction to continue. We have to create an environment where survivors feel empowered to come forward, where they are met with empathy and respect and support, not skepticism and blame. We have to ensure that our legal system is equipped to handle these cases with the seriousness they deserve and that survivors have access to the resources that they need beyond the legal courtroom. We have to address the root causes of this epidemic, prevention, awareness, and fostering environments where respect, consent, and safety are non-negotiable values. Additionally, support for survivors has to be holistic. They have to have access to counseling, medical services, legal advocacy, and of course, community support, regardless of whether they choose forward, your bravery is an inspiration. To those who are still grappling with their decision, know that you are not alone and that your voice matters. Your story matters. We see you, we believe you, and we are. If my internet is on one bar at the moment for some reason. Hold on. Some specific. Oh yeah, what's going on? Well, is that back? Okay, back up there. Name, you probably know that <clears throat> depending on the age of the victim, 
um, you can file these cases, these individual cases uh, under Jane Doe or John Doe. Uh, each state is different in that respect. Uh, typically, there is a, a balancing test like the public's right to know the name of the of the victim of the confidentiality of the uh, probably know that depending on the age i don't think the public needs to know the names of the the survivors they don't because i can assure you the names that have already been put out there's people on youtube who will be doing the digging into their lives of what they've done where they've been everything they have they had charges on them before you know what I mean? It's ridiculous. So, no, they don't need to know the names. It could be Jane Doe, John Doe, whatever. Unless they say, yeah, you can put my name there. I don't mind. Do you know my name? But otherwise, keep it as Jane or John. The victim. Um... You can file these cases, these individual cases, uh, under Jane Doe or John Doe. Uh, each state is different in that respect. Uh, typically, there is a, a balancing test, like the public's right to know the name of the of the victim and plaintiff versus versus uh, the confidentiality and the safety of the plaintiff. So we'll have to struggle with that with each one of these cases. Our intention, of course, is to, like we always do, file these cases uh, under a pseudonym uh, until the court tells us. Otherwise, but let me let me share with you a few a few just kind of give you a sense of, of the kind of cases and the kind of instances that uh, people are calling and reporting that we are trying to corroborate vet uh, and these are the ones that we've already corroborated vetted and collected evidence on. Um, one, one individual who was 22 years at the time um, she was assaulted said that. Uh, the, the typical MO at one of these parties that have been widely discussed um, in the press was that when when you were handed a drink, and now we know that the drink is laced with something, if you refuse to drink it, you were kicked out of the party. Now, let that sink in for a minute. I mean, the admission to this party was that you had to drink this, the chosen drink that was handed to you uh, and now we know that that in, in most cases, I would say 90% of the cases, uh, these individuals were drugged with some sort of drug. That's, that was kind of the MO. Another instance, uh, this individual who was nine years old at the time uh, was uh, taken to a audition in New York City with Bad Boy Records. Uh, other boys were there to audition as well. All of them were trying to land a record deal. All of them were minors. Uh, this individual was sexually abused, allegedly by Sean Combs and several other people at the studio uh, in the promise uh, to both his parents and uh, to him himself of getting a record deal. Um, another instance, another minor uh, told allegedly by Sean Combs that he would make him a star, but needed a visit with him in private about it away from uh, his parents, once uh, they were in a private area, allegedly Mr. Combs made uh, the victim uh, perform oral sex upon him. Uh, another incident, uh, an individual 15 years old at the time flown uh, to New York City to attend a party, uh, was drugged and then taken into a private room, uh, allegedly in the presence of Mr. Combs, uh, where this uh, female individual minor was raped and then other individuals took turns raping her. Another 26 at the time uh, was picked up by allegedly by Mr. Combs and several other people uh, in a black SUV from the airport, uh, was given one drink in the SUV and then literally woke up the next day not knowing what had happened, but with pain and damage to both her vagina and her anus, where she was then, she then went to the hospital. She was missing her underwear and her shoes. 
use. Another instance, an individual, uh, this time not a minor, uh, was attended a dinner allegedly with Sean Combs in Miami. Uh, she was drinking, she was pregnant, uh, but she drank the table. Currently, according to her, was late something. She blacked and she woke up in the again, allegedly with Mr. Combs uh, in his uh, mansion in Miami. Her vagina and her anus were torn and sore. Um, and I could go on. I mean, literally, you, you, you're, you're sensing a theme here. It's, it's the same theme. Uh, and it all involves uh, some sort of drug. Um, one instance, an individual who was 20 years old uh, was asked to attend, just saw her on the street, asked to attend a, a party in a hotel. Um, she was flattered, went to the party, was given one drink and doesn't remember anything else. Was, went to the hospital where they found um, in her quote um, experience and all the things that happened to him uh, says allegedly at the hands of Sean Diddy Combs and his try to sign um, a record deal uh, this was kind of what he was told he would have to do his quote is had he been I feel like I could have been some great. I quit, I quit the industry because of what Sean Combs did to me. And that's really what it comes down to. We are pursuing this, asking you, you the effort to come bring your so we can continue this side. We can continue to uh, be heard. Um, this is oh god! I hate this internet. This type of sexual assault, sexual abuse, and sexual exploitation should never happen in the United States, in the United States, or anywhere else. This should have never been allowed to go on. This conduct is from mass individuals. Scared. One of those individuals, we ask you, if not to us, to someone you trust. If you're someone who witnessed any of these events, we ask you to reach out. Your name can read. What asks? I don't know what the feds are aware of, okay, but I do know it's 25 out of this 120. Antonio, I will I will say this to that point. Um, we welcome the FBI or any authority who wants to come to us and we're going to make that available to these victims because I think that's important. Um, I, my, my suspicion is based on uh, talking with these folks is that, that, you know, the FBI is just not aware of these people. Uh, the FBI has talked to some of these folks uh, and I'm going to try to make, encourage the victims uh, to in fact talk to the FBI because I think then auditioning because they were musicians or were any of them uh, kids of employees or anything like that? All, all seeking either TV or some sort of music career with promises of, you know, we're going to make you a star. Instead, basically did things to them such that they, they don't, don't want to have anything to do with the entertainment industry ever again. All right, guys. Thank you for your attention. We're going to go now. Thank you. All right. Now, my heart breaks for all of these survivors, all of them. But 
to think this nine-year-old and fifteen-year-old who thought it was probably really good at what they was doing. You know what I mean? Just think where they could be now if it wasn't for people like Diddy and all that. And I'm glad that this firm are going after everyone. That means all his, uh, all the members, all his staff members, right? Because you're telling me he's got housekeepers and chefs and all that lot, and I know the chefs because I've just I posted a couple of complaints onto X the other day, where chefs have made complaints about Diddy, right? Now they know this is going on. The security guys knew this was going on. Right? And they did nothing. You know what I mean? They did everything they could to keep him happy. Oh, make sure he's got the right amount of D-U-R-G-S and all the baby oil. Oh, God, baby oil just makes me oh, cringe now. Right? And... All that they did everything to make sure he was happy, and his his pounds, his clients, whatever, were all very happy. But what about the people who survived, the victims, the survivors? What about looking after them? Right. We're now going to watch. Yeah, uh, I'll go just get down. The interview given by, oh, what's the name? I can't think of a name. I'll think of it in a minute. I'll get it in a minute. Oh. I think this is it. Yeah. So, Thalia Graves, right? Now, after this interview, I was reading people, listening to comments and reading comments, and listening to people, what they were saying after this. And I was quite disgusted. How they didn't believe her. I'm thinking, why would she publicly put herself out there on camera? Right, with her name and everything, if it wasn't true. Why would she publicly do that? And there we go again. She's not telling the truth. How do you know she's not telling the truth? They don't believe her. Why? Because she's a woman? Why? So we're going to listen to this as well. I haven't listened to all of this. I came into this about halfway through. So, and then I had to go off and do something, so I missed the end as well. And yeah, it was only, what, how long? 33 minutes, so. Report, Southern District of New York. For our client, Plaintiff Thalia Graves, who is given permission to use her name. The case number of the 26-page complaint is... I've got her complaint, and I will be posting it on X after I finish down here on live. 1-24-CV-07-201. In her lawsuit, Thalia, through her attorneys, sues Sean Diddy Combs also known as the defendant, and another individual and other entities. The complaint alleges in part in the first cause of action that defendant Combs and another defendant committed a, quote, violation of New York City Victims of Gender Motivated Violence Protection Act by viciously and violently for sexual contact 
oral sex and sexual intercourse on the plaintiff, end quote. In addition, the complaint alleges in the second cause of action that defendant Combs and another defendant committed a violation of New York civil rights law, quote, section 52 hyphen B, end quote, by quote, raping plaintiff and recording it. Defendants caused plaintiff to be de depicted in a video image, unclothed and with intimate body parts exposed and engaged in sexual conduct with another person, end quote. The lawsuit also alleges that, quote, defendant Combs and another defendant published and or disseminated the videos without plaintiff's knowledge or consent. Calling it as I quote, and should be ordered to account for and destroy all copies of the video that are in their actual or constructive possession, custody or control end quote. And that quote, defendant should be temporarily and permanently inseminating or publishing any intimate videos of plaintiff, end quote. We also allege in the third cause of action that Combs, another defendant, committed a violation in New York City code 10 quote the video of themselves violently raping the plaintiff and the defendant request that judgment be entered against defendants as follows Awarding compensatory damages for all, all physical, psychological harm, pain, suffering, family and social disruption, and other harm. Awarding punitive damages in an amount to be determined to trial. Awarding attorneys' fees and costs pursuant to any applicable statute or law, including under New York City Administrative Code for New York Civil Rights Law to New York City Administrative Code Section 10 hyphen 180 and any other applicable statute or law. We're also seeking additional relief that the court may deem just and proper. As a result of what is alleged in the lawsuit, Thalia alleges that she has suffered and continues to oh. I spoke to my network the other week about this interruption on my internet. And they said, oh, it's because at certain times you get a lot of people, I don't care. You promised me there'd be no buffering. Suffer um, among other damages. Um, Alia will speak to the impact and harm that she has suffered and continues to suffer. She will take this courageous step because she thinks that it is important that the swear to God. Oh, what am I public on playing up? I'll just have this little chat. Right. She's not going, I don't think she mentions anything about going after anyone who was involved, who knew about this, you know what I mean? 
apart from the people that was in the room, maybe. Right, but it's not mentioning anything about going after the businesses, the household staff, his enterprises, his business staff. No one. Understand the impact that rape and other criminal acts have on those who have been victimized. Often victims do not speak publicly about the specific damages that criminal acts cause them. Some of the many reasons that victims do not speak out publicly about this include being ashamed or shamed for this. But we believe that victims should not be shamed and instead those who committed the criminal acts against them should be ashamed and take responsibility for the harm that they have caused victims to suffer. We are very proud for speaking out today in order to help victims of rape and other acts of sexual violence against them. In addition, we thank our co-counsel, Marianne Wang, Gregoria, and Jasley Liriano for their exceptional legal work on this complaint. Our goal for Thalia is very simple. We want justice for her, and we are looking forward to winning it. It is long overdue for those who have caused her to suffer to be held accountable. Now, all these cases, as you said in that last interview, that last lawyer, Busby, right, uh, can, are going to be like, could be singular, like a single case, each one. This is going to be a single case against Diddy. Yeah? So, you think of all these trials he's got ahead of him. All of them. He's got the racketeering and S trafficking case against him by the FBI. We don't know if the FBI will take any of these uh, other cases on because they're under age and the minors. You know what I mean? Don't think so, but we'll wait and see. But he's going to have so many days in court, so many court cases against him and I'm to go to, from one state to another state to wherever you know what I mean oh and I thought as much today right you know if he got bombed and he was allowed to leave prison or jail whatever and go to his house where he'd have to stay in his house yeah what about, or even if they got him into another prison somewhere, yeah, another jail, whatever, right, until his court case. So they managed to get him out of that place into somewhere else. They then got to transport him every time to court. What are the chances that an escape wouldn't happen? Hmm? Chances are someone will try and get him get him out. So they can't put him on bond. They can't. Okay, a little more. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. My heart breaking for her in this interview. The internal pain after being sexually assaulted 
has been incredibly deep and hard to put into words. It goes beyond just physical harm caused by and during the assault. <laughs> it's a pain that reaches into your very core of who you are and leaving emotional scars that may never fully heal. Some of the hardest parts of this pain are the shame and the guilt I have experienced that plays a negative part in my day-to-day -day ability to function properly, being blamed, questioned, and threatened has often made me feel worthless, isolated, and sometimes responsible for what happened to me. My family issues made the pain even worse. I was already going through a divorce at the time of the assault and did not get the support that I needed. I was also faced with disbelief and judgment. This has put a strain on my selection of men and relationships. <clears throat> Where many relationships became aggressive and abusive, which has made me feel even more alone in my struggles. I go through spells of being distant and withdrawn that it's sometimes so hard to leave my house. The trauma of the assault has taken a toll on my mental health. I've had PTSD, depression, and anxiety. I'm emotionally scarred. It has been hard for me to trust others to come. Sorry about this. I also suffer with physical problems such as sexual discomfort experience effects. and healing. I'm glad that he is locked up, but that's a temporary feeling of relief. Oh, yeah. Take question. The question is, can I speak about the context of this alleged assault? I know it's difficult for your client going there to identify what prompted her to come forward now. Okay. Um, I think it's important to note that the assault was reported to the police and the assault was reported to the police. 
Amelia, what do you know about the video bill that was There are many details in the complaint. And my internet kicked me off. So we'll go back to it. Hopefully it'll be where we... Yeah. Right. Viewed by others. Thank you, God. And they still be out there being viewed. Who are the agents of this complaint about uh, any wrong charges uh, against Mr. Combs? The question is does this complaint overlap with the criminal charges that have been filed? My understanding of the criminal charges charges are that the charges are sex trafficking and of a um sorry about this my internet is doing my head in tonight this criminal charge i'm gonna smack my internet provider in our complaint Has she been in touch with the federal prosecutors at all? Question is, have I been in touch? jury is a secret proceeding. The other defendant and the video alleged defendant in this Lay your eyes on the video. Have I looked at the video? No. I have not viewed the video, nor do I wish to view the video, nor should anyone else view.
and a court believe that he should have permitted to view a pornographic video. end up being evidence in the case and we do not i'm so sorry about this my any such yet. video if we have it i will any other more. person because we do not think it is permitted under the law Gloria, Elizabeth from CNN. Uh, in would you please speak up it's hard to hear you yeah sorry I'm That's sure. and a bit short uh, in the complaint, uh, you know, learned about this video in November 2023. That is around the time of the first public lawsuit, at least, against Sean Holmes um, from his ex-girlfriend, Cassie. I'm curious how you and your client learned about the existence of this video. You're saying that this incident occur is alleged to have occurred about the time of another lawsuit having been filed? I can't. Um, I'm sorry. Sorry, I can't understand your question. This uh, like in 2000, but your client more than 20 years. I'm sure she was of that video. Yeah, we have. So the question is she alleges that the incident took place in 2001, but you are saying that it is a in the complaint that was filed that she learned about it in 2022. And then the question is, how did she learn about it? We have no to that question. I think has Diddy reached out to client? Question is, has Diddy reached out <coughs> we will not comment on that either. Gloria, um, yes. would you be able to share a little bit of her background? And where does uh, she come from? Or what do you do? Can you give us some details about your client? And for details about where she came from or what she does. Or if your knowledge has so is, is the question has it so it's come on after right I'm so sorry about this. My internet is fluctuating from one bar to two bar. And tomorrow I'm going to be phoning my internet supplier up because this is not on. I pay a lot of money for my internet. I don't care what time of day or what time of night it is. I want a good internet service. this alleged attack can you elaborate on those threats question is can i elaborate on the allegation that she was threatened after the attacks and no because really evidence or anything that might have evidentiary value at this time. Or there's a, an allegation in the lawsuit that the video was made available for sale. Can you elaborate on that? that and was Mr. Combs? There's right. an allegation. I'm stopping the... it there because we got it's we got some like can you have a 20, 25, 20 some minutes of just of questions. And what she's doing, she's paraphrasing. They ask her a question. 
and she's paraphrasing it back. So then that gives her time in her head to think, they're asking me this, 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 and this, okay? And then it gives, she can get the answer, right? But I believe this woman. How she knew about that tape, I do not know. Perhaps. Uh, did he did show her on his phone? Because don't forget, uh, what's her name? Cassie said she deleted any videos that was made on her phone of her. However, Diddy showed her the video on his phone. She thought she deleted it. She probably had from his phone, but he's got it off his video recordings, his videos that he's got in all the rooms. He's got it on them. And that's probably what Diddy or someone in his little circle has done, show her part of that video. And that's how she knows there's a video out there. I feel sorry for her. I really do. And as for the over 100, well, 3,200 some cases uh, come forward, and out of that they've got 120. Because like I said, they have to validate them all, right? Some of them might have gone out of the time span. Like if it's before 2015, it's, it's over 10 years. Right, it's over 10 years. So some of them might be 2012. 2001. This is what I can't understand is how can she be putting this claim in now 20 years later? Right? And yet, in that other lawyer, he's only took on 120 cases because unless they're looking at the rest of the cases, they might just be looking at the other cases now. Because surely the time limit is gone. You know what I mean? First is 20 years old. Surely that time limit has died off, killed it, for her to make any prosecution. I don't know how it works in the USA. I do know that they do, I have heard there's like a time span, depending on the case. The charge, right? So we'll have to see. Let's see if any more of those cases that came forward are picked up on. Because that was a lot of people to come forward, and that's a lot of people to check out. Check the validity, the, have they got uh, pictures, dates, times. You name it, you know what I mean? Have they got any, what do we call it um, on the YouTube, uh, any receipts? Have they got the receipts? Can they prove they was there at this time, on this date? You know what I mean? Is there, Have they got any evidence they can show them that they was at this, say, hotel or at his house? Or, at, or on a boat, or anywhere, at the time that happened. So, I just think it's a shame. Right? For all these people, the men and the women, and especially for those who were minors at the time, nine years, ten, twelve, and as I said, that nine-year-old, there were others there auditioning, right? How do you know none of them were assaulted? Right? It's 
so I do feel sorry for them all. But I hope and pray this judge does not give, does not release him from jail. He went to court, they went back to court yesterday. I don't know what's happened so far. I'm going to see if there's anything new come up on YouTube about it. Hold on. Let's just check. Because normally I'll check, I don't check and then I log off. And then I go and sit in the living room. And there's something come up. And I'm thinking, oh, God, can I check before I went offline? So. Household names to be revealed. Lawyer, oh, that's just another YouTuber. What's this one? Julia Papa. Hi, good morning from 1010 Wins. Uh, any indication that some of the women or victims here were imprisoned in his residences and did he have locations where he kept them and did they were not allowed to leave? And uh, also, uh, he's indicted here, although there were searches and raids in LA, New Miami, York. why in New York? Well, um, I'm, I'm biased. I'm the U.S. Attorney in the Southern District of New York. I think that we um, have an outstanding track record of bringing some of the most impactful, sprawling, complex, difficult um, sex trafficking, uh, human trafficking, labor trafficking, you name it, um, the Southern District of New York can do it. And so we're very proud of that. And so the scope and complexity of this investigation isn't something that we ran from. It's something that we embrace and we will continue to do that. Um, as to your question about whether he imprisoned anyone um, all I can say is that, you know, I mentioned this March 2016 incident where something was caught on video where a victim was attempting to flee um, and there was violence that was associated with it. Was that at the Red Door Inn or a um, That was at a hotel. Matthew Lee, Inner City Press. Sure. Uh, thanks a lot. Does your office intend to, to seek remand or are you reaching a bail package? And if you're willing, can you, how would you contrast this with the R. Kelly case in, in EDNY in terms of the elements? Thanks. So, um, we will be seeking detention. We have filed a letter um, laying out our reasoning uh, for seeking pretrial detention. Um, I'm not going to be able to expand beyond what's in the letter, but it contains um, all of the reasoning and it contains uh, the law as well. Um, there is a presumption of detention in a case like this, and we think that's warranted. John Anise, New York Daily News. Thank you. Um, I was hoping to get some more detail about the uh, searches of his residence, um, the, the uh, guns, the, the cases of lubricant, and the videos. Where were they found amongst his residence? Were they all scattered around the houses in one place? So I kind of wanted to just get a better picture of, um, of how that stuff was found. Well, look, I, I think that some of the details um, that you're seeking are in the detention letter. So for instance, um, some of the, the, the AR-15s, two of the three face AR-15s were found in his bedroom closet in Miami, um, broken down into parts along with magazines um, with ammunition uh, loaded in them. So um, some of the, some of that detail is in the detention letter. Yeah, yeah we looked at that detention letter last night uh, and I'll put it online. Ben Kochman, Post. Hey, thanks for uh, doing this. Um, your office um, was the office that uh, had been prosecuting uh, Jeffrey Epstein uh, before he uh, died uh, in custody. Um, I, I have not read your detention memo yet. It's the first thing I'm going to do uh, after this ends. But does it does the does the memo address or is your office concerned with uh, Holmes's safety in custody? given um, given what happened with Epstein. 
So we are concerned with anyone's safety whenever they are um, detained prior to trial. It's part of our obligations to keep people um, safe as well. Um, it's part of the criminal justice system. So, um, but I do not draw any sort of connection between um, Jeffrey Epstein's suicide and um, what may or may not happen um, to any other defendant while they are um, detained pretrial. And of course, the decision whether to um, detain the defendant will be up to a judge. Our position is that pretrial detention is warranted under the law and based on the facts of this case. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Are, are some of the prosecutors on this case uh, some of the same prosecutors that had been uh, handling that or, or that worked on the Maxwell case? So. Um, I'm not going to get into the, 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 the staffing. I will say that this team, this group of, 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 of AUSAs, this incredible um, group has been working on this case around the clock um, and they've had their hands full. Next question. What's the Maxwell case got to do with Diddy Coombs case? Right? Two separate cases. What he did with the speaker of sport. And what Diggy's doing, has been alleged to have done, is despicable as well. But they're two separate cases. And I can assure you, when this case is over and done with, there'll be another one. And when that case is over and done with, there'll be others. There's more out there. There's more of these sick, vile human beings out there. Gus Rosendale, uh, NBC News. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, Combs attorney said uh, that his client has been cooperative with investigators. He said that this morning. I was wondering if you would have a reaction to that. Um, I think this is an old... I think that was an old recording because it was literally telling us the same as what I've already heard and what we've read in that detention letter. So, let's just check again, make sure there's nothing I'm not missing. Because... Right, let's go there. Come on. Let's wait to go. Hey, come on. My internet tonight. No, I lost it. No. No. No, there's nothing new come through at the moment. Nick. So. I'll tell you what your views are. Hold on. Hold on. I don't know what your views are on this case. I just feel sickened to think that there's all these people that doted on him. Would go out and buy his singles, his CDs, his whatever. Right? All his merchandise that he was selling, his clothing, his promotions he made. All that money that people was making off him, his name. And all the money he was making off all these young, innocent people children who liked him for his music, right? And the parents going out and buying his CDs and the brand clothes because that's what Diddy wore and things like that. It makes me sick. And we are here to protect our children and you got people like that. And as I said, Diddy won't be the last he won't be the last. There'll be others after him. I've heard something about another rapper, another hip-hop person. 
His name's been mentioned quite a lot. And I'll tell you who to watch. I don't know her full name. Hang on. I'll see if I can pull it up. Her full name. I swear to God. you got... There's two people I know. Who... Jaguar Rod. That's J A G U A R W R R G H two T. I mean, watch some of her videos. I swear to God, I've been watching a lot of hers, and she rips into everyone. She's not scared. She's not scared by anyone, right? And then you got. Okay. Is it, is it Cat Williams? Yeah, Cat Williams. Right? Now, these two people, even... um, Oh, my God, I wish I'd put these names down. Even... There's been so many artists and people out there telling the, the world about Diddy for years, for years. There's a, a woman who got sacked from her job. She was um, on TV. She Wendy, her name was. I can't think of her name. A full name, Wendy. She's on American TV channel. And she got sacked because of what she said about Diddy. Her career was ruined by him because she spoke. And now, what she said about him all those years back is now coming out and is now being shown as truth. Are they going to apologise to this woman who they sacked? Because, oh no, Diggy got in touch with by his lawyers, got in touch with this TV company and said, Sacker, otherwise we'll sue you or whatever. So they've sacked her because of what she was saying about Diddy all those years ago. Cat has been saying, um, Cat Williams, uh, Jaguar, she's been talk saying it. They've all been saying this about him. And no one wanted to know. I didn't know because I'm not into all this celebrity. This is why I said when I looked at this case, I had to separate the celebrity bit from it, put that to one side, and look on the criminal side of the <coughs> pardon me on the criminal side of the case, like the charges that was coming, like the sex trafficking, the oh god. Oh, God. I hate it when my mind goes blank. Um, the racketeering. Right? And when I first heard about this case many months ago, I thought, oh, it's just the racketeering. Right? I didn't know about the sex trafficking. I just heard about the racketeering. So I thought, hmm, okay. And then, this is when they did the raid on the house, on his houses. And then no one else was really talking about it on YouTube. And I only watch YouTube. I don't watch anything else. And then all of a sudden I heard about these women coming out saying this and that. I go, what? What? Cassie, that was it. Cassie was the first one. And then that woman who we just listened to, Thalia, her. And I'm thinking, what the hell? What is going on? How was this allowed to go on for so long? And I agree with what they say. It's not, why didn't they come forward sooner? Right? You shouldn't be looking on cases like that. 
Why didn't I come sooner? Because obviously there's been intimidation and threats and everything thrown at them. Yeah? Not to say nothing. They've got people who work for him. Don't say nothing, you'll lose your job. They can't afford to lose the job. Especially in today's way. Especially since 2020. No one can afford to lose a job because since 2020 when everyone was put in lockdown and shops were closed and pubs were closed and the businesses have just not recovered. Right? So if you've got a job, you you hang on to your job. So there's, there's that being there. So this is why a lot of people who work for him have probably not come forward and said anything. Because they can't afford to. And then you've got... But then you've got these people that who work for him who are enabling him by doing the running around for him, arranging the hotels, arranging the women, the men, the D-R-U-G-S, the alcohol, the linging, you name it. All those people work for him. They knew what was going on, but said nothing. And even when anyone mentioned it to that KK, his side hand, ah, that's just Sean. You know what Sean's like. You know what I mean? I hope that woman hasn't got children. Because if she's got us out, well, you know what he's like. That's just Sean. I'd smack her one. And she should be up on charges. She really should. And we never know. Perhaps she will be. Right? She was enabling him. And then there's this other one that was talking today. Uh, one of his ex, one of his girlfriends or whatever. And she was saying, oh, I can't comment on that because that isn't the diddy I knew. Uh, excuse me, weren't you the one who had to bring in the D-R-U-G-S by fly, getting on his private jet and flying it into where he was? Yes, you was. So you can't stand there and say you didn't know what he was doing. You knew perfectly well what, and I can't think of a name. I'm going to have to keep my little, my book right by me at all times. Because names come and go in my head. They really do. But he's got so many people who could have spoke out but didn't. So many. And I'm glad this lawyer, Busby guy, is going after these people. The hotels. Right. Why didn't they say something? Come on. Why didn't they say something? Right? Oh, because he paid them a big payoff to keep quiet. No, don't work like that. Don't work like that. And I just said, sorry, no, it's not working. I'm not keeping quiet on this. This is my hotel. I'm not having that going on in my hotel. Because all these men and women they was bringing into this freak off parties were being brought in the back way. You're not going to have all these men and women walking in the main entrance of these hotels, are you? Oh no, they're going to be brought in in the back way and brought up in the lifts. Right? The lifts that the uh, staff would use. So they knew what was going on in their hotel and they did and said nothing for years. For years. So, um, I, I hope he does go after all his hotels. Because they'll just get fault from not saying nothing. And that one hotel can't turn around and say, well, we, it's new ownership now. We wasn't the owners at the time that happened. Uh, 
So you're telling me it's not used your hotel since then? Yeah? You're telling me since that incident with Cassie back in when? 23? Or was it earlier? 16. 2016, wasn't it? I'm not sure if it's 2016 or 2023. I think it was 2016 and she put the claim in, on 2020, in 2023, something like that. Right? You're telling me that since 20, since you've changed tanks, I'd like to know when it changed tanks. Because I'd like to know. Because then I'm going say, well, you're telling me since 20, say 2020 or well, 2021, he's had no, he's not come here and stayed here for a couple of days. Or he's not brought any people in the back way. You know what I mean? Because they would use the same hotels because they know they've already paid them off to keep quiet. So, yeah, we'd use that hotel because we paid them off. They won't say nothing. And as for when a lot of these people have gone up and put reporting with law enforcement and law enforcement have done nothing, shame on you. Shame on that law enforcement for not doing something about this. Shame on them. I don't care if you're undermanned, not got enough uh, money, not got the resources. This is a person's life. You, we are talking about. So shame on them. Shame on those in the hotel, the businesses, everyone. Shame on them for not speaking out. I hope they are quaking in their flipping boots. Are we going to be pulled up on this? Are we going to be questioned by the FBI? Are we going to, you know what I mean? We could lose our business. We could lose our jobs over this. I hope they do lose their businesses. I hope they do lose their jobs. Because shame on them for not doing nothing. I'm fed up of a war being put up in front of victims, survivors, to stop them from doing anything. I'm fed up to my back teeth. With it. <clears throat> yeah, I'm angry. I'm angry, okay? Because cases like this make me sick. Not just children, or women, or men. You know what I mean? If people have said nothing, they are just as bad as he is. And all those people attending the parties, the after party, not the party, right? The after party, I hope they get named and shamed. Because they was there, they stayed for that wrong reason. They knew what went on at those after, after parties. Right, uh, they knew what was happening. That's why they stayed on. That's why they didn't say nothing about these three cough parties that Diddy had. Because they didn't want the parties to stop. So shame on them. And don't let them sit out. Uh, it will grind my teeth to the point where I would want to put my hand through the TV screen. If I see any of these people, well, yeah, we was at these three car parties. But we didn't join in. We didn't join in. I would, I swear to God, if I hear anyone say that, I would smack I'd be likely, I'd have to walk out my living room because I will put my TV, my fist with the TV. I really would. I don't care if you participated or not. If you were there, you knew what was going on and you said and did nothing. The Kardashians, they need to start thinking, oh, and you know that guy, that, uh, is it, uh, the mother of the Kardashians, who was, who she was seen, who she was, uh, living with, who was living with her. He was with Diddy at 
the house on the day, Corey, his name is Corey, whatever, he was at the house on the day that Kim was found unalive. Right? He was there with Diggy. And you know what came to my head? I thought, you know what? You're so hypocritical, that family. You had a husband who died. Sadly, I'm sorry to say, yes, you did. But this husband went up and defended OJ. Defended him. And what did his wife say at the time? She had a big fallout with him over it. Because she was all for the victim. She wasn't for OJ. And then, sadly, her husband dies of, I don't know, cancer or whatever. She then marries that other guy who then went transgender. Right? And then she's got with Corey, who was involved with Diddy and was at the house the day that Kim was had died. He was there. Right? You think she'd learn, do a bit of background checking on people. And then you got um Kim and the other daughter. Right? Whatever the names are. Going to these parties. You've got the one talking about how she'd been at the party and there's people walking around naked and she said, and you give like that to one of her friends. Right? She got on a plane at 5.30. So what was she doing at one of these after parties of Diddy's? Hmm? Come on. Speak up. Right? Because she was definitely, she was definitely at, at one of these after parties if there was people walking around naked. Because, you know, it didn't happen in the beginning. The after parties was like, slept, uh, like from 1 a.m. onwards in the morning. So if you left before 1 a.m., fine, you just went to one of these extravagant parties. If you stayed on after 1 a.m., you were there for the FO parties. Right? So what was she doing at one of these FO parties? And don't tell me she wasn't there. She literally stands there talking on a TV camera, saying, yeah, I went to one of Diggy's parties and there's people, loads of people there and they're all walking around naked. What? What the hell was he doing at one of his freak off parties? Right? Whether you joined in or not, you was there, they were there, they knew what was going on. Um, but I doubt that I'll get anything done against them. Their lawyers were saying, no, they weren't involved. They may have been there, but I don't give a hoot if they weren't involved. They were there and said nothing. So, and I hope to God they do go after all of them. Every person they know who was at these FO parties, who said and did nothing. All these hotels, all these other people that obliged him by making sure he got what he wanted. His choice of that pink cocaine or whatever it is, that pink drug. I hope they go for them all. Because you know what? I'll be here at every court case. And I'll be streaming every one of them. Because this case is just... I've got one one more case. Well, there's a few cases I'm waiting on going to court for their trials. But we don't know yet when they could be. Could be a while yet. Could be another year or so before they get to court. So we'll see. One should be, I think he, one has got a court case in October the 14th, this month. 
So we'll see what happens on that one. I will be there, hopefully. If my daughter's gone home by then, I'll be um, streaming that court case that day. Okay? I'm still waiting. I keep checking on little Elijah Boo. Let's just check on Elijah Boo. Update Elijah Boo. Elijah Boo. Up. Because now he was body. Uh, they aren't speak same. Okay, we've got that one. What's this one? This one says what? Set next court bag. Uh. No new restaurant charges have been filed. Hmm. Why haven't I filed them? November the 6th is Bangs. This is for Elijah Vu. November the 6th and Barra's next court gate is also set for October the 22nd. Right, so I'm going to get my diary. Oh, well, no. I'll be following those two cases as well. Those those cases. I can't believe they've not set any charges yet on that. We you know they was involved. You know what I mean? October the twenty second. See, that's going to be a late night for me because three p.m. their time is something like twelve p.m. Midnight here, so that's 20 seconds, that way. right? So, no, I've got so we've got all these other cases coming up, right? So, I am following them, and when they do come up on a court case where the TVs will be there. I will be there as well. And then you got Vang on your bimbo the six. I thought he had one the same day. Obviously not. Right. But we'll see. I know there's one on the 14th though for Stefan Stearns. The other piece has come back. So, Frank, oh, get on the right day, Ange. Ten thirty a.m. Oh no, ten thirty a.m. will be a light starter for me. It's three p.m. God, it's going to be an early start for me. So they're all down in the diary now. But no, so we we still got a lot of cases I'm looking into. Uh, as I said, Stefan Stearns is the 14th of October. There's a court thing date set for him. Don't know what's going to be happening there. Um. Hey. He's picking on who? Right. But this case, I will follow. I will follow, if I can, follow every court case, every every time he's in court, if it's on TV, I'll be live streaming it. Even if I have to sit up till 12 o'clock at night or 2 a.m. in the morning, I will do it. I'll just sleep in the afternoon. <laughs> but I will do it. Because people like this guy and Stefan Stearns, 
and those evil, like those two evil people with Elijah Vu. And then we got um, Audrey Cunningham, that court case to come as well. I haven't heard nothing on that one. So I'll do keep an eye out for them. I'll just bring updates for each one and see what happens. Okay? So anyway, we will leave you there. Any documents I've got, I will be putting them either on my Discord account. I have got some on my Discord account already. I'll put the link in the description. I will, I'll put them on my X account. I can put them onto my community tab, but I have to redact them. I have to go through every file and redact it. So that certain words I took out because YouTube are very, very funny with that. So if you want to see the unredacted ones, go. I think some of them on my Discord are redacted at the moment, but I might change them and get the unredacted ones put on there. But the, I also have them on my X account, which are unredacted. So please, I'm not putting them on my Facebook because knowing my look, they'll probably have me for breaking some community rules again. So anyway, I'd just like to say thank you to those on X for being here, for watching with me. And please show some love. Right? Please show me some love on this video. And I'm sorry my internet was playing up like shit tonight. Absolutely crap it was tonight. I couldn't believe it. And I apologise for that. Um. So until... I will be on tomorrow night, but I might be later. Because as I said, I've got to go over and look after my granddaughter. And I'm not sure what time I'll be home. Not sure if I get home about nine, whatever. So it might be about 10 p.m. I'll come on tomorrow night, depending on what time I get home. Right, so, but while I'm out, if I see anything come up on YouTube, I will post it onto X and onto my Facebook account, okay? So please follow me on X, please follow me on my Facebook account. Um, and please, if you're watching this on replay and you got to the end of this and you're listening to this, please show me uh, some love on X and give me a like on YouTube. Leave me a comment. I do reply. So until then, I'll just play you out with a bit of music first. Right, which music are we having? Oh. <clears throat> I love that one. Oh, come on. We rise like tall buildings as the chemicals that take us higher. Good night, everyone. Good night, and thank you again for being here. It is just begun as she puts her hand in mine. We want to chase the night, want to dance to the light. Pull the stars from the sky, just two hearts running wild. Never sleep, never stop. Every shot from the top.